Hey guys, Heavy Arms 45 here. Alright, I hope y'all enjoyed that video about uh, my DMing experience in Pathfinder. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get some more out to you. Uh, scheduling issues have created some problems on trying to get more stories to y'all. But hopefully, I'll be able to get that cleared up and be able to play with my original two players that started this after my original group broke up but whatever um today i figured i'd talk about success now i know you're probably wondering success in what success in anime success in um uh, life no i'm just talking about success in hollywood which apparently is a very difficult thing we have seen a lot of people come in in their starring role as being one thing and they failed it's easy to try and put out a movie but it's hard to find one that really gives you like shows you out show like make you into the star uh of someone's heart and stuff like that you know like Okay, in most cases when I talk to people, the two people I use as my measures of success are Morgan Freeman and Samuel Jackson. Both of them, very successful people, but they got their success in two totally different ways. Um, Morgan Freeman started off with a couple rough characters, you know, characters you don't remember, but then he did Lean On Me where he played a very memorable character that you know mr clark since then he's been very i want to say selective in the characters that he play and his voice is so renowned since they've had him play god and had him do the voice over a march of the penguins that he's just making money off of just having his voice being heard a lot of times so he doesn't even have to be in front of the camera anymore but the movies that he did that weren't successful he's very selective in the movies you don't see him just do about anything while on the other side you have samuel jackson that will do just about everything um samuel jackson has not been typecast in anything um he you know he's played a black samurai if you listen if you watch afro samurai the anime uh, you know he's played jewels in pulp fiction he was in the hateful late uh, he was Steven in Django Unchained. He was Octopus in, um, not The Shadow, but I'm trying to remember what the name of that was. Um, but yeah, he played Octopus in that. He played Newscaster in, um, in Ro the new Robocop movie that came out, uh, a few years back. You know, he... Samuel Jackson has has been a wide range of stuff. And you know, in just like what happened with um Morphin, he did some roles that, you know, he kind of forgettable. Um, you know, some that like kind of stuck with you. Like to me, I always will remember that Samuel Jackson is the one who pulled a gun on Eddie Murphy and the rest of the people at McDowell's in Come to America. That that was him, you know. Um, last time when I was talking about, uh, movies, I gave, I feel like a pretty good detailed scene when I talked about him being in, uh, Jungle Fever. I remember him in Negotiator. You know, there, it's like, okay, it's, you see Samuel Jackson and he is a household name. He's known not just because he's the quality show, but because he basically... As one of my friends said, he doesn't say no to a scene because a page has a page at him. And I cannot say that somebody like Samuel Jackson does not hustle for his money. You know, and that's the question you have to ask. You know, do you have to hustle like Samuel Jackson? No, you could do like Vin Diesel. Just like take two things that you were successful in one time, buy them up and just constantly keep doing. Then play a character that is none but a giant tree and just say, I am Groot. You know, Vin Diesel, that's what he did. No, it's the same thing that kind of like, uh, Steven, uh, I about to say Steven Seagal, Sylvester Stallone did. 
Sylvester Stallone owns the Rambo name and the Rocky name, if I remember correctly. And he's the main star of both. You know, he's the one that I want to say fronts the money even for the movie Creed. Why? Because they come in the same universe of the Balboa of Rocky Balboa. So they literally are their success is based off of characters that they like, okay, people like this, and they kept doing it. And some people kind of ride into the idea of um being typecast. And a lot of times you hear people talking about being typecast is a terrible thing. Like Christopher Reeves, when he plays Superman, you know, everybody said he was typecast. And it's hard to, once you uh, become a superhero, and I do see this a lot of times when you watch movies, after you see somebody be a super, I mean, superhero, they're, it's difficult for them to be anything else. Or it's hard for you to see them in anything else. Like after Christopher Reeves did uh soup um did Superman one through five, he kind of like didn't have any other big movies after that. He was successful in Superman. He was a successful Superman. I will not deny that. But his success outside of Superman kind of flopped. Like the I want to say the um, Children of the Damned. Um, he was in that. Not many people know that. Or, you know, in the rest of his life after he had his accent, he was part of different uh, iterations of Superman until he passed away. Like, I think he was in Smallville where he came in with his wheelchair. He talked, you know, and it was a nice little homage to him. Like, yeah, you know, he used to be Superman. But that's it. There's not many people like, the guy who played uh the guy who played Superman in the Adventures of Lois and Clark, I wanna say his name, Dean Kane. Um he didn't survive after that. Like Al after he did that, the only stuff that I can literally remember him doing is I wanna say he did the TV show Vegas for a while, which I don't think a lot of people remember Las Vegas. Um then he was, um, then he was in the first season of Superman. I mean, soup, not Superman, Supergirl. And that's it. Like, after that, you have Ripley's Believe It or Not, but he never had this, after you play a hero, it's somewhat hard to get out of that typecast. And like I said, some people feed into the typecast and some people make their life that typecast. Like, take Tom Cruise, for example. He did one Mission Impossible, and now he's making a career out of being an action star, doing his own stunts. He does uh, Mission Impossible. He does Jack Reacher. Um, I don't even know how to explain the um, Top Gun 2 that he's doing. I don't, like, that's playing off of nostalgia that some people may have. I never watched Top Gun, so... You know, what what we don't do next? The next one we don't do a risky business. You know, risky business too. Yeah. Um, and if somebody died and that's impossible for them to do a risky business too, I don't know because I've never watched risky business, so I wouldn't know or care. Um, but yeah, there are several varying levels of success when it comes to being in Hollywood. You know, just. We've seen people that thought that this scene was going to be their breakout role and they completely bombed. We've seen people actually like, you're like, oh, that's just a minor role and they completely exploded in it. Success in Hollywood is all based on, in a way, your popularity at the time. Um, and also making sure you have your uh feet on the ground like if you can play a emotional character or something like that um you pretty much haven't made it sometimes if you play a character that's entertaining like in some cases and i hope this doesn't have to rob it down jr uh like robert down jr was a good star in his childhood well in his teenage years, 
you know, he had that time where he was on drugs and stuff like that. Then he came back, he did Iron Man. And really, I feel like that's going to be his epithet. If he went, well, not if, but when he passed away, they will probably put uh, Here Lies uh, Robert Down Jr., the true Iron Man or something like that. You know, they're going or something like that. Um, everyone has a success story that they didn't understand. And like I said, we've had a lot of people that like, okay, we thought this person was going to be big. Then like, to be honest with you, I didn't expect Chadwick Boseman to go as himself as he was before his passing. Um, to be able to make a Black Panther movie that, yeah, you didn't like, but you know, to be able to say that you actually made a movie like that, you actually had the power to choose what, what, uh, sing, what not type, sing, what type of character you want to be. He told them that he didn't want to be no player or no gangster and all this stuff. And he always tried to bring up a light of his characters always was something positive in, uh, I about to say in the culture, you know, even when he played the king, um, I want to say, um, there was one where he was trying to find the person who killed his sister. You know, he was trying to be, he wasn't a crooked person. He was a person looking for justice for his murdered sister. That's nothing wrong with that. You know, even when you look at Denzel Washington, Denzel Washington started off doing not just about anything, but he was a very, I won't say Spike Lee guy, but his emotions, the power that he put into the words that was given to him by Spike Lee and other directors made to where he's one of the people that's like upper crust. I will say that he's like a Hollywood alum. If I had to say that what rank he would be, I would say that him and Morgan Freeman is um, a a listers when it comes to Hollywood, and I don't think we have a lot of a list celebrities when it comes to Hollywood, specifically a list celebrities that are black. Um, they, you know, I'll give you that. There's a lot of C ones, but I it's rare for us to have. Um, black black people who are a-listers and so you know being and why am i talking about being successful in hollywood because i realized that you know being in hollywood is a lot like being in life uh hollywood has no specific rules on what makes you good at being there they have no specific rules on what would make what is the secret of success what is the best brew to make you successful it's just that if you have a certain voice like michael douglas is known for his voice um morgan freeman is known for his voice um samuel jackson is known for cussing if you watch one of his movies you looking for him to you looking for him to cuss you're looking for uh, Samuel Jackson to say one MF at one time. You know, uh, one of the most, the biggest quotes is always that he like, some MF you this and uh, I'm tired of these mother snakes on this plane. The, that is stuff that he's known for. The biggest quotes that he's known for also is when he did the whole thing of um, what does Marcellus Wallace look like and talking about speaking English and what. And I mean, yeah, all that stuff. And every time he says so, and if you didn't hear from him, because I think someone said one time that the reason he says MF for so much is because he has a lisp and it helps him to go ahead and get the words out. Great. You know, and like I said, he's been type, he's not typecast, but he's always aggressive. He's been an aggressive person. He's been a father figure. He's been a torturer. He's been a cowboy. He's been the, uh, 
house house man. Let's face it, I'm gonna go ahead and say he was a house nigga. You know, Samuel Jackson has done everything. And because of that, he is very successful in what he does. He puts that gr he puts that grinding game every time he gets into a movie. I don't wanna say that he comes in and he just like he doesn't rest on the laws of him being Samuel Jackson. He don't just come in like, I'm Samuel Jackson. I'm, you know, you can't treat me like this. He's like, okay, what you need me to do? And he works it out. Even if it's not a big role, he's getting a check. Just because now his name is Samuel Mutt Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. Samuel Mutt Jackson. Motherfucker L. Jackson. And so that's who he is when morgan freeman talks it's well and it used to be that well not used to be but for a time the only time you heard his voice was when he was doing something serious now he's a little bit more comical in what he does um the secret or the success in things come to hollywood is not always the way we think it'll be um you know, do you have to be attractive to be uh, a lister in Hollywood? Eh, you can't be ugly all the time. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm about to try and figure out where is Forrest Whitaker and the whole thing. And I want to say he's a B lister, but I feel like he could be lower. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, it's, and it's hard for me to say what he would be because it's a lot of stuff of, it's all, you're always the person that's backstage. Basically makes it seem, if you're always a person that's basically make being scenery in backstage, it kind of makes it where you're successful at being a per the best centerpiece to the wall for the most part. Is that successful? Yeah, it kind of is. But yeah, being successful in Hollywood comes in so many different ways. And once you find your, I guess you say, niche in being a Hollywood A-lister or being successful in Hollywood in whatever way you have, you have to kind of stick with it sometimes. Um, Cause we've seen people try to step out of it. Like, and this has nothing to do with movies. The girl who played Felicity, I want to say, she tried to get out of being Felicity by doing, or trying to change up, by changing her hair. And soon she did. Everyone lost interest in her. When someone tried to do something different from what the character is. Like Ben Affleck to me. He's successful in several other movies. But being Batman was not something that he was successful in. But he's successful in Hollywood. Hollywood is all about hit and miss. But there are some of these special people in Hollywood. That can find success in everything they do. The movie might suck complete balls. But they made themselves look good. And I hope y'all enjoyed this. I love talking to y'all. Because y'all are so crazy with me. And I'll catch y'all later.